In this video lecture, we will cover the classification, pharmacological effects, therapeutic uses and adverse effects of anti-muscarinic agents. To classify anti-muscarinic drugs, atropine and scopolamine are natural alkaloids. Some of the semi-synthetic derivatives are homacropine, pyrenzepine and telenzepine. The synthetic derivatives can be categorized as midriatics, for example, Homacropene cyclopentolate tropica mild. Some of the anti secretory and anti spasmodic synthetic derivatives are oxyphenonium, propanthaline, clidinium, pipenzolate, flavoxate, tolterodine, brotaverin. Anti Parkinsonian drugs include biperidin, procyclidin, benzhexol, benztropin. How do anti-muscarinic agents act? Anti-muscarinic agents act as competitive antagonists. That is, the antagonist competes with the agonist for the same binding site on the muscarinic receptor and blocks the responses produced by the acetylcholine. Therefore, the responses produced by acetylcholine are blocked and the pharmacological effects are produced. Based on the pharmacological actions, the drug has therapeutic uses and side effects are produced. Chemically, atropine and scopolamine are natural alkaloids and obtained from the family of Solantia plants. Chemically, atropine and scopolamine is formed by the combination of an aromatic acid that is tropic acid and an organic base that is tropine or scopine. The semi-synthetic derivatives such as home atropine can be produced by combining organic acid such as mandelic acid and the organic base that is tropin and scopine. The synthetic derivatives do not have organic base such as tropin or scopine in their chemical structure. Both semi-synthetic and synthetic derivatives can be tertiary amine or quaternary amine salts. The tertiary amine salts are well absorbed from the gut and easily pass across the conjunctival membrane. They can cross the blood-brain barrier as they are lipid soluble and can produce central side effects. Quaternary compounds on the other hand are non-lipid soluble. They do not readily cross the blood-brain barrier and therefore they lack central effects. Next. Pharmacological effects, therapeutic uses and adverse effects of anti-muscarinic agents on central nervous system. Atropine at low and clinical doses acts as a CNS stimulant. In toxic doses, for example in atropine poisoning, there is excessive CNS stimulation and this is manifested by restlessness, agitation, disorientation, hallucination, delirium. This is followed by depression such as circulatory collapse, respiratory failure, paralysis, coma and death. In contrast to atropine, scopolamine acts as a CNS depressant. It can easily cross the blood-brain barrier and reach the central nervous system and produce CNS depression. This is the reason why scopolamine is used as a pre-anesthetic medication as it calms the patient and acts as a tranquilizer. Atropine-related drugs inhibit vestibular excitation which is why they are used in the treatment of motion sickness. What is motion sickness? When the body is rotated or equilibrium is disturbed, the vestibular apparatus or the labyrinthine of the inner ear is stimulated. So this initiates impulses from the vestibular apparatus to the vomiting center which leads to motion sickness. Anti-muscarinic agents by blocking the muscarinic receptors of the vestibular apparatus inhibits the transmission of impulses from the vestibular apparatus to the vomiting center and reduces the signs and symptoms of motion sickness. Scopolamine is available as transdermal patches and is applied behind the ear and provides a steady state plasma concentration throughout the journey and prevents motion sickness. But this drug needs to be given prophylactically.
critically because once motion sickness has already developed, this drug is not effective. Anti-muscarinic agents can be used in the management of Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is characterized by signs and symptoms of akinesia, rigidity and tremor. It is due to dopamine deficiency and excessive cholinergic activity. Anti-muscarinic agents are useful in the management of Parkinson's disease by reducing the cholinergic hyperactivity and thus treats the symptoms of Parkinson's disease. Centrally acting anticholinergic drugs such as trihexyphenidyl, biperidine, benzexol, procyclidine can be used in the treatment of Parkinson's disease. It is known that antipsychotic drugs produce extrapyramidal side effects which is due to cholinergic hyperactivity. Therefore, anticholinergics can be used to treat the extrapyramidal signs and symptoms resulting from the use of antipsychotic drugs. Next, the pharmacological effects, therapeutic uses and side effects of anti-muscarinic agents when used in the eye. Cholinergic receptors, particularly M3 muscarinic receptors are located in the circular muscle of the eye which causes constriction of the pupil. M3 receptors are also located in the ciliary muscle of the eye which is responsible for accommodation of the eye. What is accommodation of the eye? Accommodation is the ability of the eye to change the focus from distant to near vision. The process can be achieved by changing the shape of the lens. The lacrimal glands also contain M3 muscarinic receptors and increases the secretions from the lacrimal glands. Anti-muscarinic agents or atropine related drugs block the muscarinic receptors of the circular muscle of the iris and causes midriasis or dilatation of the pupil. Because of the property to dilate the pupil, anti-muscarinic agents such as atropine can be used for examination of the fundus of the eye or fundoscopic examination. Blockade of M3 muscarinic receptors of the ciliary muscle of the eye causes cycloplegia or paralysis of the ciliary muscle. So this causes spasm of accommodation. So the eye is fixed for distant vision. For testing error of refraction, both midriasis and cycloplegia are required. Atropine causes midriasis and causes potent cycloplegic action which lasts for 10 to 12 days. So this causes photophobia, visual blurring and inconvenience to the patient. So to avoid this inconvenience, Home atropine and tropicamide are commonly used drugs in adults. But in children, the ciliary muscle tone is very high. Therefore, potent drugs such as atropine 1% ointment is preferred over home atropine and tropicamide because home atropine and tropicamide do not produce sufficient cycloplegic action in children and therefore atropine is the preferred drug for cycloplegic action in the testing of refractive error, particularly in children. The other therapeutic uses of anti-muscarinic agents are, these agents can be used for the treatment of inflammatory conditions of the eye, such as iritis, iridocyclitis, choroditis, keratitis, corneal ulcer. These drugs are known to relieve painful muscle spasm and provide rest to the intraocular muscles. Therefore, they are used in the treatment and management of inflammatory conditions of the eye. It has been seen that midriatics alternating with myotics can be used to break the synechia or adhesions between the iris and the anterior surface of the lens. Therefore, atopine related drugs can be used to break the adhesions between the iris and the lens and treatment of various inflammatory conditions. So to sum up, the diagnostic use of atropine related drugs are ophthalmoscopic examination. The therapeutic uses are refractive error testing, treatment of inflammatory conditions of the eye and breaking the synechia between the iris and the anterior surface of the lens. So now let's see what are the side effects of anti-muscarinic agents when used in the eye. 
Atropin related drugs block the muscarinic receptors of the lacrimal glands, decreasing the lacrimal secretions and causing dryness of eye. Secondly, atropin related drugs precipitate the chances of glaucoma. This is particularly seen in elderly patients who have a shallow anterior chamber or narrow aridocorneal angle. The dilatation of pupil by atropine causes falling of iris on the canal of sclem, thus causing obstruction of the angle of the anterior chamber and decreasing the drainage of aqueous humor leading to buildup of the intraocular pressure in the eye. This leads to a rise in intraocular pressure and leads to precipitation of glaucoma. Therefore, caution is necessary when atropine related drugs are used in the eye, particularly in elderly patients. Next, what are the pharmacological effects, therapeutic uses and adverse effects of atropine related to the cardiovascular system? Atropine at low doses causes transient bradycardia. Whereas at higher doses, it can cause tachycardia. Transient bradycardia is due to blockage of presynaptic M1 receptor located at the vagal parasympathetic neurons, which facilitates the release of acetylcholine. So, increased release of acetylcholine acts on the SA node of the heart, causing bradycardia or slowing of the heart rate. Whereas tachycardia is due to inhibition of vagal effect on N2 receptors of the heart. So due to blocking of vagal activity on the heart, there is tachycardia. Therefore, atropine intravenously should be administered with caution in sinus bradycardia occurring with myocardial infarction. This is because at low doses, bradycardia can be exacerbated and at higher doses, there can be extension of the infarct size since tachycardia increases the heart rate, increases the workload on the heart and because of increase in the workload of the heart, the ischemic tissue increases and the size of the tissue increases. So this can cause worsening of sinus bradycardia associated with myocardial infarction. Another effect of atropine on the AV node is that it reduces the refractory period. Reduction in refractory period increases the conduction through the AV node and this increases the ventricular rate and this is detrimental in patients with atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter with high ventricular rate. So atropine causes increased AV conduction leading to an increase in ventricular rate which is harmful in patients with atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter. Therefore, atropine should be administered with caution in patients with atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter due to increased AV node conduction and rise in ventricular rate. So, what are the therapeutic uses of atropine? Since atropine blocks the vagal effect on the heart, it has a number of therapeutic applications. While injecting contrast media during cardiac catheterization, there can be reflex vagal cardiac slowing or cardiac asystole. So, atropine by blocking the vagal effect on the heart can reduce the incidence of cardiac asystole. Therefore, atropine is used during cardiac catheterization to prevent cardiac slowing or cardiac asystole. Also, atropine is useful in the management of second degree heart block where increased vagal tone plays a contributory role and uh, this is particularly seen with digitalis toxicity where the vagal tone is high and atropine by reducing the vagal effect on the heart is useful in the management of second degree heart block. Next, what is the effect of atropine on blood vessels? It is to be kept in mind that blood vessels have no parasympathetic innervation but they have muscarinic receptors in the smooth muscles of the blood vessels. Pre-treatment with atropine prevents the fall in blood pressure that is caused by acetylcholine or cholinomimetic agents. It has been seen that atropine can cause atropine flush which means dilatation of the cutaneous blood vessels. So what is the reason for the dilatation of cutaneous blood vessels? The mechanism is not known but it could be due to histamine release or because atropine induces fever 
and this causes compensatory vasodilatation of the blood vessels of the skin to permit radiation of heat. Since in atrophic fever there is no sweating, so the radiation of heat is caused by the vasodilatation of the blood vessels and this can cause atropine flush. Next, effects therapeutic uses and adverse effects of atropine like drugs on the respiratory system. The pulmonary airways are innervated by vagal parasympathetic neurons. Cholinergic receptors, particularly M3 muscarinic receptors, are located in the smooth muscles of the airways and secretory glands. Stimulation of M3 receptors of the bronchial airways increases the tone of the smooth muscle of the bronchial airways. Stimulation of M3 receptors of the secretory glands of the airways increases secretion from the nose, mouth, pharynx, bronchial secretions and so on. Atropine by blocking the M3 receptors of the bronchial airways decreases the bronchial secretions and decreases laryngospasm during general anesthesia. Because of the property to decrease bronchial secretions, it is used as a pre-anesthetic medication because increased bronchial secretions can induce laryngospasm during general anesthesia. Drugs that are preferred as pre-anesthetic medications are atropine, scopolamine and glycopyrrolate. These drugs have an additional effect of decreasing the excessive vagal effect on the heart. So this decreases the chances of reflex vagal slowing or cardiac asystole during the surgical procedure and during anesthesia. Scopolamine has an additional advantage as a pre-anesthetic medication because it has CNS depressant activity. It acts as a tranquilizer and calms the patient prior to surgery. Glycopyrrolate decreases the bronchial secretion and causes less tachycardia compared to atropine. Therefore, it is preferred as a pre-anesthetic medication. The next therapeutic use is bronchial asthma or COPD. Anti-muscarinic agents by blocking the M3 receptors of the smooth muscles of the airways cause bronchodilatation of the airways. But the drawback is that besides causing bronchodilatation, they have a drying effect on the sputum and they cause dryness of the mucous membrane due to reduction in the bronchial secretions. This leads to the formation of mucus plugs leading to obstruction of the airways. In addition, they also impair mucociliary clearance. So, the formation of mucus plugs leading to obstruction of the airways and impairment of mucociliary clearance predisposes the patients to infections. Therefore, synthetic derivatives such as ipratropium bromide and tiotropium bromide are preferred over atropine in the management of bronchial asthma. They cause bronchodilatation of the airways, have less drying effect on the sputum and do not impair mucociliary movement. Therefore, ipratropium bromide and tiotropium bromide are preferred anti-muscarinic agents in the management of bronchial asthma or COPD. Next is effects and therapeutic uses of anti-muscarinic agents related to the gastrointestinal tract. Anti-muscarinic agents reduce the tone and motility of the gut from the stomach to the colon. They prolong the gastric emptying time and cause Closure of the sphincters. They decrease the tone, amplitude, frequency of the peristaltic movements of the intestine. So, intestinal transit time is increased. With respect to the therapeutic uses, anti-muscarinic agents are useful in the management of peptic ulcer. Proton pump inhibitors and H2 blockers are widely used drugs for the management of peptic ulcer. But before the introduction of these agents, anti-muscarinic agents were mainly used for the treatment of peptic ulcer. Among the anti-muscarinic agents, propanthalin and glycopyrrolate were preferred drugs as these are quaternary ammonium salts and they do not cross the blood-brain barrier, therefore the central effects are less. But the drawback is that they are non-selective muscarinic receptor blockers. And because they have non-selective action, the anticholinergic side effects are more. And also these drugs are not useful for the management of gastric ulcers. 
as they prolong the gastric emptying time thus exposing the ulcer bed to gastric acid for a longer period also these drugs are not useful for the management of patients with reflux esophagitis because they prolong the gastric emptying time and also relax the lower esophageal sphincter because of the relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter and prolonged gastric emptying time the gastric acid and the food contains reflux into the esophagus thus leading to exacerbation of reflux esophagitis therefore these drugs are not useful for the management of gastric ulcers and reflux esophagitis and the side effects are more this led to the development of selective m1 receptor blockers for example pyrazepine and telazepine these drugs selectively block m1 receptors of the paraffin cells of the gastric mucosa thus decreasing the release of histamine therefore anti muscarinic agents such as pyrazepine and telazepine block m1 receptors decreasing the histamine release and are useful in the management of peptic ulcer anti muscarinic agents are also used as anti spasmodic agents as they relax the gi tract and reduce the spasm synthetic anti muscarinic agents such as propanthaline oxyphenolate glycopyrrolate clidinium pyrazoloate are preferred as anti spasmodic agents and used in a variety of hypermotility disorders for example the intestinal colic travelers diarrhea irritable bowel syndrome for relief of diarrhea these drugs may be combined with opioid anti diarrheal agents such as diphenoxylate next pharmacological effects and therapeutic uses of anti muscarinic agents related to genito urinary system anti muscarinic agents relax smooth muscles of the ureter and the urinary bladder and are useful in the management of various genito urinary conditions anti muscarinic agents that are used in various genito urinary conditions are dicyclomine oxybutynate valethamate fluvoxate drotaverine and tolterodine dicyclomine is commonly used for the treatment of renal colic and relieves spasm in the ureters oxybutynate reduces bladder spasm during urologic surgery and it also reduces urinary incontinence in neurologic disorders valethamate is useful for the treatment of delay dilatation of cervix during labor flavoxate is used in urinary incontinence and for the treatment of supra pubic pain in cystitis or urethritis drotaverine has a different mode of action it acts as a phosphodiesterase inhibitor increasing the concentration of cyclic amp and increasing the calcium concentration and causing relaxation of bladder wall tolterodine is useful for the treatment of urinary incontinence with less side effects so these drugs by causing relaxation of the bladder slows down the voiding of urine leading to urinary retention therefore these drugs are contraindicated in elderly patients with hypoplasia of prostate because they increase the chances of urinary retention lastly to antagonize muscarinic effects of drugs and poisons atropine is a specific antidote for anti acetylcholinesterase and early mushroom poisoning It is also given to block muscarinic actions of neostigmin used for myasthenia gravis, decurarization or cobra e venomation. To sum up the therapeutic uses, anti-muscarinic agents can be used as anti-secretory agents for pre-anesthetic medication and for the management of peptic ulcer. They can be used as anti-spasmodic agents for relief of renal colic. for the treatment of urinary incontinence in neurologic disorders in respiratory system they can be used for the management of bronchial asthma and copd anti muscarinic agents are used as midriatics and cycloplegics for diagnostic and therapeutic purposes they can be used as cardiac vagolytic agents for central action they can be used for the treatment of parkinsonism and for the treatment of motion sickness
This brings us to the end of the topic. These are my references. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and share.